Good day, everyone. How's it going? Just hanging out in the saw shop here, going through some emails, comments, questions. A uh, lot of newcomers on the channel lately. Welcome to everybody that's new. Uh, thank you for coming back and hanging around on the channel. Uh, to the people that have been here forever, I appreciate all you guys. We have people here that have been here since day one. Pretty neat. I'm getting a lot of questions lately. Uh, timing numbers. What does it all mean? Now, if you're new to the channel, please go through my playlist. I did a how to port a power saw or how to port a chainsaw series uh, about a year ago. It's long, lengthy, but it's all in there. If you want to learn how to modify two strokes, it is all there. Um, I also did a chainsaw cutaway series. So this is going to be chainsaw cutaway number six. Timing numbers. I'm going to revisit some, some older content and, and kind of compress it for those of you that are new. Um, I have this chainsaw cutaway here. This is a still uh, 028 Super. I cut it in half so that everybody, including myself, could see the inside of a piston ported two stroke. So let's zoom in on this and show you guys how it works again and how to modify. How do I pick my timing numbers? Okay. I'm going to show you how to pick your timing numbers and how to do it for a small saw, a big saw and, and things of that nature. Okay. Here is our chainsaw cutaway. Okay. It's a two stroke. One stroke up, one stroke down. That is the full cycle of a two stroke. A four stroke has one stroke up on the intake and one stroke down and one stroke up for exhaust and one stroke down. That's why four strokes have valves in the top. That lets your intake charge in and your exhaust charge out through a set of valves and heads and through your exhaust port and in through your intake and carburetor. A piston ported two stroke doesn't have that. It works solely on case vacuum. Okay, so let's go over this again. When the piston goes up, this bottom end assembly is sealed. Okay, you have a crank seal here, you have your case gasket, and you have a base gasket. This assembly has to be sealed, or the saw on the upstroke, okay, here's your upstroke. This is pulling up just like a syringe on the bottom end. If the saw has an air leak, it will suck air. Usually in through the crank seals, it'll suck air in and lower the amount of suction. Okay? The piston skirt here, I'll zoom you guys right in so you can see. The piston skirt clears the intake port right here. Your carburetor is hooked up here. Okay? This is under vacuum because the piston is pulling up on a sealed area. When the piston skirt clears, the intake charge is pulled in through the carburetor, okay, into the bottom end. It pulls it up, and then on the way down, it seals it off. And then it compresses all that fuel and air into the bottom end, okay? Now, what releases that? Your transfers, okay, you see that? So this compresses it from here to there. That's it. So you get five, seven PSI, they say. Okay. When these open, it lets the bottom air charge or the bottom end charge through the transfers. There's your lower transfer. Okay. And out through the upper transfer. That fills this area. And yes, the exhaust port is open. Interesting, isn't it? The exhaust port is open when the intake is, or when the upper transfers are actually filling this top end. It's open. Uh, people have asked me that. It is. But notice, this air hits this wall and swirls around. And by the time this is closing, it goes from there and back to here. Some of it does get out the exhaust port. That's why you'll you'll generally have a little fuel in your in your exhaust of a two-stroke. Now, so once all that good stuff happens, and this goes in here, the piston goes up. The minute the exhaust port is covered by the piston, 
it is compressing it. It compresses that charge from here to here. Up, under compression, just before it hits top dead center, usually 30, 20 degrees before top dead center. And when we say degrees, we're talking degrees of crankshaft rotation. 360 degrees is your total rotation. Okay? So, let's go back to here. As this goes up, you squish it just before top dead center, we'll say 20 degrees on this saw, the spark plug fires, giving it just enough time to, to ignite that fuel and air, and it goes boom and pushes it back down. And then the exhaust goes out through the exhaust port. Okay, and remember, as that's happening, we are drawing air in the bottom end because the upper transfers are covered and therefore sealed off. Okay, so as that's going up and compressing it, we let air and fuel in through the intake, filling the bottom end. On the way down, it seals it off. Exhaust port opens. That old fuel and air that's been combusted goes out here, and we start it again, okay? So for the newcomers, I hope that helps you with how a two-stroke runs. How do we modify a two-stroke? Well, we put a timing wheel on the end of the crankshaft, and we measure in degrees how many degrees from top dead center, okay? So if top dead center is here, okay, how many degrees after top dead center does the exhaust port open? This saw is about 102 degrees, if I remember correctly, okay? 102 degrees after top dead center. I'm gonna post a link right here, okay? to the full series, the full cutaway series. We covered all this uh, earlier on in the series. Okay, we'll say 102 degrees after top dead center, the exhaust port opens, okay? That's how you time an exhaust. I usually stick a light through here and it shines and I look for a ray of light shining into there. The first ray of light, which will be a little sliver of light somewhere in the exhaust port, that's when I measure the exhaust opening. This one's 102 after top dead center. Now we talk about blowdown. Blowdown is the difference between the exhaust opening, 102, and the transfers opening. It's generally around 20 degrees, okay? So if the exhaust opens at 102 and the transfers open at 122, that is 20 degrees of blowdown. Intake timing is measured on the upstroke, okay? After bottom dead center, that is bottom dead center. We measure the degrees to when the intake opens, okay? See it open? Just as it opens right there, we measure that. Usually it's around 70 degrees. And then we measure where it closes, okay? We'll say this one opens at 70, okay? It opens at 70 and it closes at 70 before bottom dead center. That would be 70 plus 70 is 140 degrees of duration. That's how long this port is open. Okay, now, how do we modify a two stroke? You guys see uh, fellows like me, there's a lot of us out there, guys do snowmobiles, dirt bikes, chainsaws, whatever, uh, boat motors. How do you modify a two stroke? Well, this is a chainsaw. It does not have an expansion chamber. If you have an expansion chamber, the rules are a little bit different. Uh, expansion chambers will make the saw peakier, meaning the power band is smaller. But generally, they'll make more power, okay? So this, is, this does not have an expansion chamber. If we want this saw to have more RPM, generally, the way I port, is I will raise the exhaust port, okay? If we raise this up two degrees, this saw will make more RPM. Now, what is, what is the downside of that? If you make more RPM, okay, you will get more heat, more fuel consumption, sometimes more wear on the rotating assembly, the bearings, okay? But you will have a saw that cuts faster. Now, 
If you raise this too high, and I, I tell folks this all the time, don't raise it too high. If you raise this too high, you will lose torque. Why? Because you are only compressing from here to there. Okay? In a, in a four-stroke, we could put a higher duration cam lifting the valve open longer and deeper put a long long duration high lift cam we can open the intake port longer okay so but two strokes you can't do that because you are limited by your height from here to here if you put this too high you will make less compression and you will have less power in the cut the saw will absolutely scream but when you put it in the wood it'll fall flat on its face you will also make a very small power band. People call it a power band. Um, okay, we'll call it a power band. The power will be made in less of an area. Okay? How can we get around that and still have a higher exhaust roof? Well, you can machine the squish band or the combustion chamber. You can go in here with a lathe and you can go in here in a lathe and cut this higher and then cut the base lower and leave the piston stock and you can have a smaller combustion chamber a higher exhaust roof and still maintain stock compression that's a good deal isn't it now at higher rpm even with stock compression you will still you're putting more force on the bottom end if now if you want to build a torque saw machine here and there, and don't raise the exhaust roof. Some guys will widen it, okay? That will create a really torquey saw. Now, if you want to blend in between, that's where the fun starts. That's where experience and, and testing and tuning and blowing saws up is where guys learn. If you want to learn how to port, start doing it now and do it often and experiment. Um, nobody can tell you what's good for your wood. You're going to have to experiment Okay, and, and, and play with it. So that's how you make a faster saw. Now remember, a bigger saw will tolerate a higher exhaust roof than a smaller saw because a smaller saw doesn't make as much power to start with. Okay, so keep that in mind. If you're porting a 50cc saw, you don't want to go raising this up much, if at all. Now, intake timing. If we port our bottom end our transfers, okay, if we smooth these and add more area to here, we are adding case capacity. Case capacity will give you, higher case capacity will give you more fuel and air at higher RPM, is my experience, okay? If you add case capacity, you definitely want to add intake timing. You will lower the floor of the intake, just like you raise the roof of the exhaust, you will lower it here. Okay. How far? Don't go too far, friends. If your saw is 70 degrees, if it opens at 70, add a couple degrees. Because remember, two degrees of intake timing is four degrees of duration. It opens sooner and it closes later. Okay, so keep that in mind. If you add too much intake timing, your saw will be lazy. It won't throttle up quickly. It can spit back through the carburetor and it just, it won't have the power of a saw that's properly timed on the intake, okay? Transfers, this is one thing that people argue about. I like a lower transfer because um, I find I build more pressure on the downstroke and therefore I get a little more oomph coming out of here when these open. If you raise your transfers, you will tend to have a zippier saw. They rev a little quicker, um, but I find they don't pull as hard in the wood. So if you're building a limbing saw or something of that nature, you might want to raise these transfers. Now, not all saws like a low transfer and not all saws like a high transfer. You're going to have to experiment with that. Okay? So you could create longer blowdown by opening the exhaust sooner. If you open the exhaust sooner your blowdown will be longer because it's the distance from this opening to that. The sooner you open your exhaust, the, the quicker or the more time you have to get that exhaust out of here so that you're filling this. I like lower blowdown because I feel like 
I'm giving the exhaust more time to evacuate through here and I'm compressing the bottom end for longer if I do machine work that lowers everything down or I'm compressing it the same amount of stock but the transfers are filling a lower pressured uh, combustion chamber the longer I let this flow out the less pressure there should be in here. Because the difference between the exhaust coming out and the transfers filling is quite a bit of difference in pressure. So there you guys go. Um, another thing, if you're gonna jack your compression high, expect to eat bearings, okay? These little bearings only tolerate so much abuse. If you have high compression, you can break your crankshaft, your bottom end rod can fail, and or this. I, I often don't find that these will go um, often the bottom end will will take the beating. You could do the math, friends. If you jack compression 25, 30 pounds or more, uh, do the math. It is crazy how much more force you're putting on this bottom end. Now, if you're looking for a play saw or just something to have fun or you don't care, jack compression. But remember, more compression, more heat. These are air-cooled. The more heat you make, the less power an air-cooled motor is going to make. Um, that's why everything's liquid cooled now. They run cooler and they run in a more consistent um, heat range, which means you can more consistently make power. Okay, so if you want a long lasting saw, raise your exhaust a little bit, raise your intake or lower your intake a little bit, flow those transfers, and you should have a long lasting, easy running, faster saw than a stock saw. Okay, I hope that helped you guys kind of see what's going on uh, in a piston ported two stroke. Any piston ported two stroke. That could be a weed whacker, string trimmer, um, a two stroke tiller, a chainsaw, snowmobile, dirt bike. That's how they work. Um, I hope that helps you guys pick your timing numbers. Don't go too far, friends. You can always go back in and grind a little more. If your exhaust is too high, it's really hard to add material back, especially if you don't have a lathe. And remember, there's no free lunches. If you lower your intake a bunch and raise your exhaust a bunch and you're not happy, the only way to fix that is to machine the bottom of the cylinder, the top of the piston, or the uh, combustion chamber and lower it, but then you have more intake timing. Well, you might push your intake timing past a happy area where the saw is going to run good. You might make it spit back through the carb or be lazy or just be a fuel hog. Then you got to go back in with JB Weld, fill the bottom end, the bottom of the intake, and then grind it again. So um, less is more. You will see, um, you know, two degrees of exhaust and two, three degrees of intake timing on most saws with, with some lower transfer work will really up the performance of the saw you'll feel it so uh, start small and work your way up and then you can get to doing some of the crazy builds you see guys like me do it's it's a lifetime endeavor and the more you think you know the more you find things that you don't know and you keep going anyhow another chainsaw cutaway i hope that answered the questions of the newcomers check my playlist friends i have 40 or 50 playlists on this channel i'm always adding to them I have a chainsaw cutaway playlist. I also have a how to port a chainsaw series. Um, I'm pretty proud of that series. I worked on that for, I think 15, 16 weeks. I made a video every week and I'm proud of that series. That series covers absolutely everything from getting a saw that doesn't run, tearing it down, studying it, picking timing numbers. I go through that in great detail. What tools to use, grinding, chamfering, finish work, putting the saw back together, breaking it in, and then we gave that saw away. So um, check out the playlist. If you guys have any more questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Take her easy.